expecting one. So if you want to sacrifice towards the end of the service, I will ask that you do so. And uh, by the end of this year, a modern structure, modern structures on the facility will be there and will be able to cross over. These facilities include us having the ability to take care of the children properly. So where we are putting the Sunday school class, we are putting canteen behind so the kids can be fed and we will feed them. You and I will feed the children. And when the kids come there because of distance, if they want to sleep, we provide facilities warm enough, clean enough for them to sleep so that parents can be in church. So it's a bigger project. It's not a small thing. We are coming up because the next generation has to be well taken care of. They have to say, at church there's food. We have to go. Then those who come from far, you come from Lusaka, there will be a snack for free that will organize there because you are coming at a distance. Because it's about 26 kilometers from here. So we provide a snack for you because you come and spend the order there. And a free snack will be given. Probably a hot dog or something like that. And we'll provide for that. It will be church that will make... Now the community, if they know there, that space will not be enough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then the transport system, one of my sons is buying another bus tomorrow. So maybe he may have two. So that's part of the plan we have. So the buses from my sons will transport people to church. And then we'll have a small arrangement where we give them fuel and the basic maintenance of the buses. So we're okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Shout amen if you're born again. Amen. All right. People are thinking about money. The title of our message is today is one, part one. It's one, O-N-E. I don't know if you put underscore one or upper score, depending on which school you went to. One, one, one. Praise the Lord. So, guys, make sure I sound everything. No, no mistake. Make sure perfection. One, that's the message. So we start from... John chapter 17, verse 21. So, chair, you'll be reading. I'll be reciting. Hallelujah. So, Sister Va, you help us with the kids because of uh, recording. And since we don't have sound, just to, uh, yeah, the noise, the ones who are screaming, our babies. John chapter 17, verse 21. John chapter 17, verse 21. And I received your seed, Sister Va. I'll pray for you. I've remembered John chapter 17, verse 21. So you read it for me, sir, and then we move on. John 17, verse 21. Yes, sir. That they all may be one. That them all may be one. Uh huh. Yes, sir. As we are. Thou, Father, art in me. As you, Father, are in me. And I in thee. And I in thee. That they also may be one in us. Read it again, sir. That they all may be one. That all of us may be one. As thou father art in me. As thou father are in me, Jesus speaking. And I in thee. And I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe. Uh huh. That you have sent me. A Christian, we cannot see oneness with God, cannot be believed in the world. The highest power that causes misfortune in the world is the absence of oneness in your essence as a person with God Almighty. Read it again, sir. That they all may be one. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, I in thee that they also may be one in us, that they also may be one with us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. You see, my brothers and sisters this morning, my mothers and fathers, there are two key statements mentioned there. That as I am in you, and as you are in me. Many Christians are in the kingdom of God. Many Christians are in God. But God is not in them. 
This is why the world has not believed you. This is why the world has not believed you. Because to qualify to be believed, you have to be in God and God has to be in you. Many Christians are religious. We are ever pursuing to be in God. We are never meditating for God to be in us. The overall existence of a Christian is to mature unto Christ and Christ to form in them. That's why we exist. But many of us, and I, that's why I fear. Let me repeat it again. Don't have a jumpy spirit as a Christian. Stop pursuing God everywhere. It's not everyone that has God. Sometimes the pursuing of God everywhere is showing me or somebody closer to you that probably you do not have God to settle with. It says in Isaiah somewhere that perfect peace will I put in your mind because your mind is stayed on God, not on pursuing God in places. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. When your mind stays on God, God gives you perfect peace. I think it's Isaiah 26 verse 10. So many of us are everywhere. But we are never with ourselves. Tell your neighbor. Now let me repeat it again. Say never. Many of us, especially women, are everywhere. Except being with themselves. This is true. So neighbor, stop pursuing to be everyone except being yourself. This is true also. Being everywhere, even in the kingdom of God, is instability. In James chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, When you are like that, your nature is unstable as water. And the Bible says, don't be deceived. It didn't say Christian or non-Christian. Anyone who is unstable in a belief or in a church, the Bible tells you clearly in verse 8, you will receive nothing from the Lord. So imagine going to different crusades. You are in, in America, you are in Uganda. That instability, God says you receive nothing. Me, I know people who have gone to Uganda, who are sons and daughters of mine to seek miracle. When they came back, they have never told me what happened. It's been now seven months. I'm still waiting. I've never asked. They smile. I keep asking. What happened? Because your Bible ministry, becoming a Christian is a miracle. Staying a Christian is a principle. Tell your neighbor. Now speak with energy. Say neighbor. Becoming a Christian is a miracle of salvation. Staying in Christianity is a principle. So neighbor, when you keep violating the principle of stability, you will receive nothing. Because when you are not born again, when God saves you, that's a miracle. You know God as a miracle worker. This is why miracles, neighbor, easily happen to new converts. But as you stay on, God is a God of principle. Christianity is not far from the way family is raised. Giving birth is a miracle. This is why we pray that it's safe. But when the child begins to grow, you no longer pray for miracles. You begin to teach the child principles on how you live as a family. Now imagine the child you've given birth to is everywhere. The first question they'll ask is, whose father is this child? This time, change it. In Christianity, don't always oppress fathers. 
He asks you, whose child are you? <laughs> because we are ever oppressing fathers for the behavior of Christians. Sometimes ask, are you, are you your own child, your own father or mother? Praise the Lord. So Jesus said, Father, that they may be one as we are one. I in you and you in me. When you settle with God as a Christian, over the years, no matter how hard it is, no matter how rough it is, no matter how painful it is, no matter the persecution you experience, over the years, people will hear of you. This is a reality that Pastor Mzumara has started experiencing. It's been years. Years of faithfulness. Years of trial. Years of almost quitting. I have always thought about quitting at some point. 2019 was a year I almost gave up on ministry. 2016, I equally gave up on ministry, literally. But you see, when you are pregnant, you cannot give up the ability to give birth. Tell your neighbor. Say with energy, children of God. You can't give me double or two. Auto. Sacrifice for building, you don't. To say amen loudly, you can't. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are pregnant, it's impossible to deny that you're not going in labor. You will still produce results. So in the times that ministry was off, this ministry was off for nine months. Probably ten months with the other, maybe eleven months with the other years that I was off. I said, I'm done. I'm not going to do this. But you see, even when you are done, that's when the miraculous power is even stronger. I went in Quito to pray for somebody whose wife was not conceiving. She conceived. I said, this thing, you can't escape it. After seven years, it's part of me. Sondash, it's part of you. Probably you'll hear what I'm saying. Then we prayed for a small girl when we were praying in the house. A girl, the eyes were, um, the pupil was in the, you know, this side. I prayed, and I wasn't, I wasn't serious, Pastor. Because I said, die, ah, this thing I'm done. The eyes became normal. I said, this thing is still inside. <laughs> you can't escape it. So we began to conspire in 2019 to resign for me to come and do God's work fully. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's the starting point. So, Pastor, as we move on, we go now to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17, 15 to 19. There's something I need to explain. So I said the greatest cause of lack and want to a Christian is you not being one with God and God not being one with you. It's two statements there. The identification as a Christian, you are one with the body of Christ. But can your actions show us that you are, God is one with you? Say, neighbor, yeah. it's one thing to be one with God. <clears throat> But it's another thing for God to be one with you. Greatness hangs on this. Neighbor, the inability to demonstrate God out of you is holding greatness away from you. Say, neighbor, the inability to be one with God is the greatest cause of misfortune and instability on this earth. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 6, 15 to 19. Very quickly. Today, simple message. Uh, I wanted to do so much, but it's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's number one. The moment you got born again, your body became a member of Christ. But we are not so sure currently if your spirit is a member of Christ. Proceed, sir. Shall I then take the members of Christ and uh -huh. make them the members of an harlot? What is killing the Pentecostal church is harrowedly. That's what is killing the church. We are ever pursuing an illusion that we have never found. Tell your neighbor. A jumpy person is one who normally fears to take responsibility. When you find a Christian who is everywhere, their appetite to take responsibility is extremely low. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, 
When you find a Christian who is everywhere, where they call fire, where they prophesy, where they pray, where they sing, has very low appetite and ability to take self-responsibility. Proceed, sir. Mm? God forbid. What? After what, I think there's an exclamation mark. Because he was shocked, Paul, by what was happening. Question mark. Shocked. A man of God who saw the third heaven, very shocked with the behavior of Christians. Proceed. No, ye not. Uh huh. He which is joined to an hallowed is one body. So now it's very difficult to believe Achievers members are Achievers members because of Harotly. It's very difficult to know who belongs to us now because you join your body with everything. That's how deep it is. Proceed, sir. For two, three things shall be one flesh. You see? So now in the spirit, there's diarrhea. No one can see where you're coming from. So where are you from? Where do you belong? Proceed, sir. But he that is joined unto the Lord... He that is joined unto the Lord is what? One spirit with who? The Lord. Read it again, sir. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. Hebrews 12, 9. Let me come back there. Let me explain that statement. So I'll pray for people today, God willing. I think I have anointing more. Like I say, when I struggle to preach, I have more anointing for power. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. 12 9. Hebrews 12 9. Yes. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh uh -huh. which corrected us. That's what I'm doing now. A proper father is a strong one. Especially when he thinks, uh, when we are this strong, it's a power of protection. We want you to know that this anointing does work. And it's working for non-believers in this church much more than the believers here. Maybe 50 times more. It's working. This man, as I talk about, I hardly lie. That happen, happens. If it wasn't happening, how can they be sending me money to keep building? See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And we give them what? Reverence. Uh huh. Shall we not much rather be in subjection uh -huh. to the Father of spirits? Shall we not be much more be in subjection unto the Father of spirits? Uh huh. And live. And live. So there in writing, Paul is giving contrast. He's saying, as much as we have biological fathers, we also have a father of spirits. He that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit with the Lord. So it tells you then primarily, fatherhood in giving birth is given to two powers. A biological father and God Almighty. Everyone in between is a mentor or an inspirer. The one you call a father in the faith does not give birth to you in most cases from that context, but inspires you. But in terms of giving birth, physically, my father, Peter Mzumara. Spiritually, God Almighty who liberated my spirit to be a son unto him. Hmm. Hey, let me hold it bit by bit. Galatians 4, 6. I had another direction, but let me hold this direction. One, part one. I don't know how you put one there now. One, one. One in weight, one in letter. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Yes, sir? Galatians 4, 6. Yes, sir? And because ye are sons, because ye are sons God, has sent forth the of his son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. So there's no way. I heard a man of God in Zimbabwe telling people that a born-again believer can host other spirits. And he was giving an example of John the Baptist. Read it again, sir. Because you are sons of God, yes? God has sent forth the spirit of his son uh -huh. into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Ah. So when we get born again, we receive the spirit of Jesus, his son, for us to go God, Abba, Father. Abba means source. 
If God is Abba Father, he is now the source of spirit. I don't know if you are following what I'm doing, bit by bit. Hold on. Romans 8, 9. Uh, hallelujah. Then 15. Romans 8, 9, then 15. There's something I want to build as a case here. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. But ye are not in the flesh. Ye are not in the flesh. Uh-huh. But in the spirit. But in the spirit, yes? If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Ah, that one is a fake version. Which one says the spirit of Christ? That one is New King James Version. They're changing it now. Yes, sir. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, uh-huh. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ. So when you get born again, your spirit is taken over by the Spirit of God. Go to 15, verse 15. And I hope those who are online can participate because I'm about to shock you. And I hope you still have your spiritual fathers after this session. <clears throat> yes, sir. Because spiritual fathers are giving their spiritual sons a spirit of bondage for them to fear. Last overnight, our quarterly overnight, we had a young man sat here who I could not deliver because he said that case should be handled by his spiritual father. Elder Sidney, you remember that boy? Yeah. That's bondage. He's still in bondage. He's still bound. Because the spiritual father has no capability to deliver him from that. But because he told him no one can pray for you except for me. Hmm. Proceed, sir. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. So we have received the spirit of adoption. Uh huh. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba means source. So, okay. So when we come to Christ, when we are born again, we have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the source of my spirit. Abba means source. Abba means source. Abba means source. Matthew 23, 9. Last verse in this case. <laughs> yes, sir. One. Yes? And call no man your father upon the earth. Ah, Okay. How many, sir? How many? One. How many? One. How many? One. That's why there are no spiritual fathers. You know, me, I'm a very controversial person biblically. And I don't fear to be controversial. Because when you come and listen to me, by the time you want to argue with me, I'll line, line you through a few scriptures in the Bible. That is Jesus speaking express. Therefore, under heaven, call no one father. For you have one father where? In heaven. So let's put a caveat to that. John chapter 4, verse 24. That's a caveat to it. I think I'll finish on this one. So you online person, Alex, be typing so that you provoke people. All these things I'm saying, be writing them. There are no spiritual fathers. Be putting that. Let's get reaction. Be typing, you bright, whoever is on, be typing that, Alex, on Facebook. John chapter 4, verse 24, be typing points, Alex. Uh huh. God is a spirit. God is? God is? God is? God is? God is? So hold on, sir. Let me come back now. I will not proceed from this. Maybe let me take time to explain this. Today I came to do introduction. I will do much more next week. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When we started raising this case, we started from 1 Corinthians 6. In verse 17, the Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So the first question, all of us that are sober, one, one. Because a Christian is supposed to be one. This message on one is a message on holiness. Holiness is right standing with God or one standing with him. 
And I have shown you why people don't know you. Because you are not one with him. And today I came to challenge you and fight with your oneness with him. That one, the Bible says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He that is born as Malunga is one body with Malunga. No one can claim that man as his father. If he calls any man father, it's a privileged position or cultural understanding. But there's one Mr. Malunga alive now. He was not given birth to by two fathers, but one father biologically. So when the Bible says, he who joins himself with the Lord is one flesh, that man, for example, is born from one flesh. That's why no one can also be a father to him, except for cultural context or just respect. But biologically and scientifically, he has one biological father. So how can now science and biology be more advanced than spirituality? How is it that in Christianity we have more than one father in this world? Even Paul said it. I'll come to that at some point. You, when you got born again, your spiritual father was John General. Now, along the way in pursuing miracles, your spiritual father became Sia One. You are now in Genesis. Or you are now pursuing Uganda and everywhere else in the world. You are confusing even evil spirits. Tell your neighbor. Because them say neighbor, neighbor. Evil, spirits evil spirits have one father, have one father. In, Satan. in Satan. You neighbor, you, neighbor. You, are you are confusing Satan in this issue. <laughs> so you're one spirit. So biologically, why biology and spirituality has been in context for comparing and contrasting? So it tells you if the essence of biology is having one father, it means then the essence of having spirituality is having one father. It says so in Romans 1.20, that the things that are invisible are explained by the things that are visible. We can just put it for reference purposes. So it means then at that particular time, we begin to question, where is now somebody coming to father your spirit? Father, in essence, means source. The reason why Mr. Malunga calls the father my father, is because Mr. Malunga cannot exist if the father never produced him. The primary root word for father is source. We cannot call anyone father until he's a source. This is why I prefer people calling somebody father in the faith, because I am being a source of a doctrine of faith and understanding unto you. That qualifies biblically. But when I say spiritual father, it's a conclusive statement. Your spirit is whole. So now it means then I should be one that inspires your whole being. It's impossible. That is cultism and that is witchcraft in the church. Please, I'm handling something very critical. Just pay attention for a short time. We saw the effect of witchcraft in that young man. That young man today, if Jesus comes, he can't make heaven because the spiritual father told him, you cannot be delivered by another person. That's witchcraft and control in a certain format. So now, you people who are seated here as disciples, begin to think, if biology gives you one father, does it mean then spirituality you can have another father? In heaven, the source, all right. From the beginning when Adam was made, the soil was formed from the earth to give credency in the future that biologically you'll be given to from the people on the earth. But the source of his spirit was one man. Adam never had a spiritual father. This spiritual father thing came in because of you and Pentecostal churches and the Catholic church. Adam never was fathered by a man biologically. But he had one spiritual father, God, who was what? The source of spirit. We moved from there. Then we came further on. We read in Matthew 23.9. Call no one father for you have one father where? In heaven. Then we said in John 4, 24, God is spirit. So now we go back to Matthew 23, 9. Call no one father on earth, for you have one father in heaven. So the father in heaven is what nature? Spirit. We rephrase it in writing. 
We say, call no one father here on earth, for you have one father who is spirit in heaven. The context there of not calling father is not a biological discussion. It's a spiritual discussion. When heaven is mentioned and the father is in heaven, his nature is spirit. So the form of discussion for that context is spiritual discussion. Jesus expressed with his mouth, told you, call no one spiritual father in express in reverse. If the father in heaven is spirit, then he tells you, call no one father on earth, for you have one spirit who is a father in heaven. So the context of discussion there is a spiritual discussion. Because the Pharisees, he was turning them away from, they were spiritual rulers. So the form of discussion there was spiritual. It's impossible for Jesus to miss it. Talking to Peter, who was fathered by Zebedee. Jesus wouldn't be that dull. He is the form and the fullness of wisdom. He says in Colossians 2.3, In him all wisdom and knowledge exist. He can't miss it. So the form of discussion there is Jesus telling you, Call no one father on earth. The essence and interpretation is spiritual fatherhood. For you have one father where? In heaven. What supports that? Hebrews 12, 9. How much more should we give reverence to the father of spirits? The Bible fully explains the source of spirits in human beings. It tells you totally that God is the father of spirits. Jesus, who came from heaven, tells you, you cannot call anyone on earth spiritual father. Because by saying the father in heaven, who is spirit, is telling you, do not call anyone father on earth, for you have one spiritual father in heaven. He is a father because he is a source of spirit. Somebody would argue and say, man of God, you cannot call God spiritual father. But who gave birth to your spirit? How was Adam called? What was Adam supposed to call God? My spiritual father. Because the spirit I have, the source of it is God Almighty. He says so. Then it comes, we read in Galatians 4, 6, it says we received the spirit of his son. Any proper Christian that has Christ in them cannot call another man spiritual father. Because the Christ in you, the spirit of Christ in you cannot call a human being my spiritual father. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> Say neighbor. The spirit of Christ in you. Who is God? Cannot call a man he made my father. We read again later on that we have received the spirit of Christ in Romans 8, 9, and 10. Then in 15 he says we have received the spirit of adoption within us. So if the spirit you received to make you one, what happened is this. When you are not born again, it's you here. When you are born again, okay. When you are born again, you are swallowed in the spirit of God. So a Christian is swallowed in the Holy Spirit. So do you tell me your Holy Spirit of God in you can call a man it made spiritual father? Ask your neighbor. It's impossible. And this is accepted as culture in the church. For you have one father. Holiness is an illusion if somebody is called a spiritual father to you. Because the terms of understanding God is placed in that man. So you are swallowed up. So how do you expect the Holy Spirit to call me spiritual father in you? Don't you see this is religion and tradition? Don't you see this is an effect of witchcraft in the church? And holiness and oneness with God becomes an issue. Jesus primarily wants you to know one God. One God. One God. This is also eliminating the misunderstandings on Trinity. When God is one, Abraham, your overall form of peace I experience when I wake up is that there's one personality in me. And God sees me and God watches over me. I fear nothing. I dread at nothing because there's somebody within me that is one that watches over me. And I have grown to know one person, God, as my father. You know, growing up as a person, as a small testimony, I have struggled to be fathered by pastors, especially the ones that call spiritual fathers, including one I was with for so long, maybe the longest three years. 
trouble. I did not know probably I had a message from the same Bible my father's read from to give the next generation to give clear context. We normally call them fathers out of culture and out of just reverence. But biblically, Jesus tells us, one, how many fathers in heaven, son? One. How many? One. How many? Already that discussion clears off Trinity. Because there's one <laughs> in heaven. Somebody argued with me a lot. They call himself a theologian in Tuntu or something like that. He says, no, you cannot mislead people about Trinity. I asked him, in the new life, when there's resurrection, how many people are you going to see in the Godhead? How many gods are you going to see? Because you'll be a spirit. So since there are three, you should see three spirits in God. The Bible never gives proof to that. But there's one personality we will see, as we will be spirits. Then it tells you already, even before you are spirits, that was what was there before. Praise the Lord. When we come down, it tells you then, therefore, that there's no room for a man to be the source of your spirit. Ah, okay. A question I'll ask, then I close off. If pastors claim to be spiritual fathers, how come they never delivered you, your spirit from the devil? Ask the your neighbor. No, this is here. Say, neighbor, if your pastor claims to be a spiritual father, how come he never even made an attempt to deliver your soul and your spirit from the cross of the devil? Because then we'll believe that he is the one who sourced you from Satan. Ask again, say, neighbor, if your pastor is a spiritual father to you. When did he pull your spirit from Satan so that he can rule over you? The church is quiet. Alex, be typing. I like, I want, today I want extreme controversy. <laughs> are we together? So there are no spiritual fathers on earth because they want, no one can source your spirit. The Bible clearly in context tells us the source of our spirit is God. The source of Adam's spirit is God. Even, let's see here. Do you know that even the birth of Jesus came to eliminate spiritual fatherhood? Because Jesus was fathered straight by God. No one could claim to be the father of Christ. They cheat us. They tell us, no, Jesus had John the Baptist as spiritual father. What witchcraft is that? Even John the Baptist said, who is coming before me is greater than I. So how does it happen like that? They fear. This one, this one is hot. This week is a hot one. Disciples of this age. But it's biblical. Jesus came to show you that for you to be born again, like he came to reincarnate himself. Because being born again is reincarnation. Literally. There's no man that can participate in that. Because your spirit, no man can manufacture it. So Jesus is born of God. To show you that when you get born again, the church can be Mary, the womb that you are born. The pastor can be Mary, the one who gives birth to you, to your understanding. But the one that gives birth to what has happened to you, there's no pastor who can place Jesus' spirit inside you. Tell your neighbor. That's why these days the prayers for you to receive spiritual baptism have ceased. Because there were acts of ignorance. And there were acts, you know, when something is born of God, the early church practiced laying of hands for people to receive the Spirit. Because this, the gifts of God are progressive. They are born infant, they grow over time. Because they were dealing with barbarians. Now I deal with Christians. When you are born again immediately, what do you receive inside? The Spirit of? So ask your neighbor, neighbor, after receiving the Spirit of Christ inside you, how do you get baptized in Christ again? Ask your neighbor. They have changed your heart. You say, no, baptize my heart. They have changed the heart. Baptism now of the spirit is progressive growth in knowledge. If you spend a lot of time praying, it's, it's impossible for you not to speak in tongues. It's a lie. It's an overflow. The better way of baptizing or evidence of baptism in the spirit is when you spend so much time praying 
there's always muttering that comes because you no longer know what to say. That's now what you should call baptism. It's already inside, but God was waiting for you to activate and mature in it. I don't know if you're getting me. Because now the greatest enemy of society is either a politician or a pastor, now a prophet, or a policeman. These are the worst peas of society. So now, because Abraham has been told in my church, you, no longer, you need to come to me so that I baptize you in the spirit. I now become a spiritual father and a custodian of the person of Abraham. God never came to create things like that. He came to set us free so that we can have an access to him. This is why I fight for responsibility. The enemy of Christianity is abundance of freedom. Tell your neighbor. Because people hardly get responsible because of how free Christianity is. This is why I come in with responsibility in the freedom that you have. Are we together so far? Do you have spiritual fathers on earth? No, say it out of the word of God, not because of what I've said. Do you have spiritual fathers on earth? So who do we have? So the reason why God is eliminating this is so God wants to be one in your spirit. Me, I'm a very stringent person. Around things like this, I believe in one thing per time. Maybe that's why I believe in one wife per time. You understand what I'm saying? Because God does not give you many fathers. It's one. One. He is one. He is the father of your spirit. Hebrews 12, 9. He is the source of your spirit. So before I get us confused, so pastor, what happens? I'm getting there. I'm trying to close off. Can you ask God today where you are seated? Father, maybe I never understood. My holiness, my oneness, my upright standing with you, my one standing with you could have been fought because probably I never had this understanding. Pastor, I don't know why I'm on your case today. Do you know the impossible I see is because I'm one with him? So I just become a pipe that he, charge, he charges his miracles through. You know, even if you are tapping water from Zaka water and sewerage on your yard, one pipe that brings water in the yard has much pressure other than when it's divided. The pressure reduces according to division. You as a person, are you one tap as a source of God's power? Or you are very divided? Jacks will tell you that the pipe that the main pipe where we tap into come, that one can blow you up. The power we are not experiencing is because we are not one pipe with him. There's so much power on the other side, but we are so divided within us. The flow of God is not one. That's why we no longer see impossible happening. I am seeing the impossibilities happen weekly now in my lifetime. It's not month and but we had, last week we had more money than what Manthen gives us. What's happening? You can't explain it. But because I'm one with him, oh, there's no this God will provide. One pipe, the power from the other side flows over the other side. That's affecting Christianity. That's why no one knows who we are. Because we cannot discharge as one pipe from one source. He is the father of spirits. The Bible is clear there. It makes him then... If Chuck, somebody fathers your spirit, who are they? What kind of father would you call them? Spiritual father. Because he's source of my spirit. In the same manner that we call biological father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you have the power bank? Yeah, put power bank on it. On the thing, the convent. Right. Okay, it's fine. Are we together? So now, what kind of fathers are we? We have on earth. Hebrews 13, 17. What kind of fathers do we have? Hebrews 13, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Read it for me, sir. Mm -hmm. Obey them that have the rule over you. Over? No, I want the one that says over your soul. It's the same one. Proceed. And submit yourselves. Uh-huh. For they watch for your souls. 
They do what? They do what? They do what? They do what? So, by, so you now call them my father of the soul. Proceed. As they that must give account. As they. What is the responsibility of your pastor? Watching over what? Your soul. What is the food of the soul? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word spoken. What is the soul's material? The soul is made out of knowledge. What is the primary responsibility of your pastor? Is to feed your soul with the word of God. To source an understanding within your soul. That's why my jurisdiction ends. My job is to see your, the welfare of your soul by knowledge and being an example in what I teach you. That's why now we call them what? Fathers in the faith. Because our knowledge is called faith material. <laughs> Are we together, church of God? Are we together, church of God? Are we together, church of God? Amen. Obey them that have rule over what? Your soul. My job is your soul. Your well-being. <laughs>